you were absolutely, as a, from an outsider's perspective, on a list to maybe be a running mate. Obviously, that's not what's happened. But is there a place for you uh, officially in uh, a Biden-Harris White House? Oh, goodness, no. No, I am very interested in being as helpful as possible from the outside. But this is a chapter of my life where I'm going to spend in the private sector. I'm just curious, in terms of this strange interregnum period we're in now, are you in a position where you are being briefed on, on the status of the lawsuits? I haven't been in touch with uh, uh, the Biden transition team's lawyers. Uh, one of them in particular was our White House counsel, Bob Bauer. Um, their take is, is that the lawsuits are frivolous. Uh, perhaps even more importantly, 12 out of 12 courts have thrown them out so far. And so I think it's a bit of a waste of time and energy when we should be focused on the smooth transition of power. What, what sort of things are not getting done? Uh, funds would flow in order for the president-elect to pay his transition staff. They are up and running, uh, and federal resources are normally used to pay their paychecks. Uh, the Memorandum of Understanding would allow the federal agencies, all of them, to share information with the transition team that is not publicly available right now. And that's everything from the presidential daily briefing that uh, President-elect Biden would be entitled to receive, together with uh, Vice President-elect Harris, and there are people who have been cleared for top clearance for security purposes would be able to get those briefings. So obviously, a lot can happen over this period of time, and our enemies around the world would see us as being vulnerable in the event that there isn't this smooth transition of power and want to take advantage of that. So that's another disadvantage to the um, the obstructionism we're seeing right now. Well, I think, I think people remember that that was one of the reports about 9-11, that, that the delay in the transition because of, of the recount in 2000 meant that there was a gap in, in counterintelligence sharing. Well, that's exactly right. And, and as a result, a new regulation was put in place that would require this cooperation, but it has to happen at the president's request. And so far, that has not happened. To a degree, it, I realize people were prepared for a delay. People were prepared for uh, President Trump not taking it well. But has any of this surprised you or surprised President-elect Biden or Vice President-elect Harris? I don't think so. It's pretty consistent with what we've seen over the last four years. At what point did these denials become dangerous for the United States? Well, well, as President-elect Biden said, right now he is not concerned. You take it one day at a time. You hope that President Trump uh, at some point recognizes the outcome of the election is clear. And I know that the team around uh, the President-elect will be ready to hit the ground running. And so that's where the focus has to be. We can't control his lawsuits. We can't control his lack of cooperation. Uh, President-elect Biden said he's not considering a lawsuit right now. Uh, but in time, when the Electoral College gives their result, then uh, my hope at that point in time, certainly, if not sooner, we will see the uh, Republicans who right now are remaining quiet in the Senate, although Republicans around the country are saying, okay, enough is enough. But when the Republicans in the Senate start to pivot, then I think we'll perhaps see a little more cooperation. You know, there are countries around the world where people have been similarly divided and angry with each other. And in, you know, in other parts of the world, they've taken that to terrible extremes. How dangerous is it f for average Americans? Well, right now, I'm not worried about that. We're just a few days after uh, the independent networks call the election. I think we have a long way to go before I would start to say the United States is in danger. But I will say we do have a tradition in our country of cooperation. I remember when I co-chaired President Obama's transition, uh, it was... Um, remarkable to me how incredibly supportive President Bush and his team were to us in the transition. We may have disagreed on matters of policy, but we believed that governance is one thing, politics is another. And in turn, when uh, President Trump was elected, President Obama demanded the same of us to ensure that there was that smooth transition, including, for example, an uh, important report that was compiled on how to handle a global pandemic anticipating that one would come. I'm, I'm curious what you make or, or what the team makes of the changes at the Pentagon. What, what is that signal? 
Well, chaos, I suppose. Um, I, I, I have no insight into the decision making in the Trump administration whatsoever, but it is unusual to have changes in the cabinet during the transition. They obviously disagreed as to whether or not the military should be used to enforce domestic laws. The secretary said he didn't think so. Um, so I guess I'm not that surprised that um, he would, that President Trump would do what he did. Uh, but, but all of that is in the short term. I think where the focus of the American people and the people around the world ought to be is the longer term. And when I say longer, I just mean January 20th of what will be, what will happen. And President-elect uh, Biden has been very clear, rejoining the Paris Climate Accord, where Canada and so many other countries have been a part of it, and we pulled out four years ago, making sure that we rejoin the World Health Organization so that we can be a part of the solution, the international solution to tackle not only the COVID-19, but whatever else comes along, making sure that the dreamers have certainty. They've been in limbo for four years in our country, and, and he wants to put an end to that tackling the COVID-19, getting our economy going again. These are all the issues that President-elect Biden is focusing on, which are not only good for the American people, but good for the world. And I'm curious, do you have anyone in your life who fundamentally disagrees with you in the sense of may say things to you like the election was stolen or President Trump won? I frankly don't know anybody who believes that there was election fraud. And even my Republican friends don't believe it. The fact is that a lot of Donald Trump supporters are having a really hard time with this. And I'm, I'm just wondering how on earth you govern in, in a climate like that. I think when his supporters uh, get a feel for President-elect Biden after he takes office and his willingness to reach out to them, his willingness to say, look, I campaigned as a Democrat, but I will be the president for all of America. I'm hoping that some of the tensions will thaw. And I do think that there is just something very special and disarming and sincere and authentic and real about uh, my friend Joe Biden that will resonate broadly across the country. And he has the ability to reach out. The number of Republicans who endorsed him all um, over the country who said, no, this is the person who I think is uniquely suited to lead the United States, and I'm willing to put country over politics. That's what makes me hopeful. Is he the sort of person who will pick up the phone and, and call a Republican senator and say, come on? Oh, absolutely, and he did it all the time. I watched him do it in the eight years that we were there. And I think that President-elect Biden will rely on those relationships that run deep. I know those of you in Canada, our close ally, our proximate, uh, ally as well um, will enjoy a much stronger working relationship. All right. Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. Stay safe. You too. Be well.